One of the best college basketball conferences in the country is not done yet tonight. From Las Vegas, final quarterfinal in the Mountain West. And from Las Vegas, you're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Jerry Pop's got six teams from the Mountain West in the tournament right now. And here we are, the final game of the day and night. Utah State, San Diego State in overtime advance. Colorado State, the seventh seed into the semifinals. And the Awakey winner of the three seed Boise State, the sixth seed. Mexico. Hi everybody, Rich Waltz, welcome back to Las Vegas. Former Gonzaga All-American Dan Dickow, Evan Washburn will join us shortly. Yeah, throw out all the seeds. The top seven in this league are dynamite, but for New Mexico, they are the bubbliest, if I can use that word, of the teams on the bubble. A win tonight would punch their ticket. Yeah, I think it would punch their ticket for sure. I still think they're in, but you're right. They're right there on the cusp. They're net solid. This win would be huge. The fact is, though, they lost both meetings to Boise State during the season. To beat a team a third time is extremely difficult. And Boise State is really good. A guy you know quite well, we know quite well. Tyson Degenhart is the heart and soul of this team. Oh, the Spokane native has been spectacular. He's such a tough cover. But in particular, the pick and pop situation, he creates space and he can stretch it and knock it down from beyond the three-point arc. He's played really well as of late. And Leon Rice has written this guy 20 a game in his last 10. All those big wins, especially that last one on the road at San Diego State. Richard Patino has three dynamite guards, but to beat Boise State, you need a big that plays well. They've got a young one who's one of the best freshmen in the country, JT Toppin. Yeah, they have a trio of guards that they knew they were gonna build around this year, but JT Toppin has exceeded expectations, leads the country in double-doubles for freshmen. He has been spectacular in the last meeting between these two teams, 21 and eight. They need production like that tonight if they're gonna win in Las Vegas. But these guards don't just score, <laughs> they defend, and Jalen House is the best thief going. Active players in the NCAA, he's got 290 steals. He needs to go to work tonight. Final call in Vegas in the Mountain West in the quarterfinals. The Lobos of New Mexico, the Broncos of Boise State. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more. By AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. And by Ace, the helpful place. All right, let's get this final game started. And to do that, we go down below Evan Washburn. Evan? Well, Rich, you guys laid it out nicely. A win for New Mexico all but locks in their position in next week's NCAA tournament. I talked to Richard Patino earlier today about how that impacts his messaging to his guys, and he said desperate is both a good and bad word. He doesn't want his guys playing tight, but he does want them desperate defensively on the glass in transition and he added this is a privilege to be in this position tonight and he wants his players to take that mentality into this game so for the lobos as they stare across the court at boise state kubota brings you the starting lineups the three guards left to right house dent mashburn each average 15 a game and one big addition for Boise State he's really come on of late and he's eaten New Mexico alive is Omar Stanley the St. John's transfer he's gone 24 and 13 and then 12 and 14 points and rebounds in the two games against the Lobos and of course Leon Rice in the middle of that huddle right now 14th year NCAA tournaments last year as a 10 seed in the tournament this year, by all accounts, it would be his third consecutive trip. And the Broncos, the three seed here, 24 in the net. Jerry Palm has him as a seven seed. And again, for the Lobos, Jerry Palm 
the first of the four teams who are the last four in. That's where New Mexico sits in Jerry's brackets. What type of game, tempo and pace wise, will we have tonight? New Mexico wants to play really fast. And they do that. They lead the Mountain West in steals and blocks. So that ignites them into transition a lot of times. Boise State, they can play fast on occasion, but they really hurt you on the interior with Degan Hart and Stanley. So they want to play much slower. I'm telling you what, there's a lot of people here from Albuquerque, a lot of New Mexico fans. House on the baseline, cut off, got it up, and missed it. And Roddy Anderson, who's the de facto point guard for the Broncos, will bring it ahead. Good number of Boise State fans here as well. It should be a loud one. This is Stanley. This is Dent. There's that steal getting them out in transition. Donovan Dent has been really good as a sophomore. Richard Patino said with all the early season injuries, he had a chance to really get himself entrenched as a starter. So they went three guard lineup and that has been all the difference for them. David Hart driving, spinning, shot fake, missed it. Stanley missed it, rebound. Still alive. And a whistle and a foul. And all the attention that Degenhart's post up and back down brought. Initial defender and then secondary defender opened up the glass for Omar Stanley. Couldn't convert on the first, but he stayed with it, drawing the foul, which is something to keep an eye on tonight because Toppin and Nelson are really the deep only bigs that New Mexico has. Keys to the game, Dan, it's brought to you by Ace, the helpful place. New Mexico crashed the glass. Boise State, one of the best at rebounding. And I just mentioned it, stay out of foul trouble for the Broncos. Take care of the basketball and limit transition points. That first offensive possession, a steal by New Mexico leading to a transition bucket. Nelly Jr. Joseph with the foul, first one of the night. So the mismatch here, who's gonna be at the advantage? Is it the three smaller guards for New Mexico or the three talented bigs for Boise State. Mashburn, plagued by injuries this year, led the league in scoring last year, misses a runner. Max Rice, coach's kid, who's had some big moments, including a huge game of 35 in the pit at Albuquerque. Wide open three, dense! Are we in Albuquerque? It sure feels like it with how this crowd has erupted with that three from Dent. Anderson around the screen. Another steal. Dent again. Oh, Dent hanging in the air. They travel well, these Lobo fans. Rice off the screen. Stanley, a three. He's 33% from distance. Doesn't shoot it all that often. House crosses over. Oh, great pass. And a terrific block by Stanley. Albo rotates. Dagenhart, give, and a block. Joseph. Top him with the screen. He rolls. He spins. That's Boise's ball. 7 2 start. The six seed New Mexico. The three seed Boise State. As Dan pointed out, Broncos won both matchups 86 78 at Albuquerque 89 79 on March 2nd which was a recent one in Boise defense, 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 defense. Abo kicks Dagenhart's three no and 
Toppin has the rebound. Broncos an 0 for 6 start from the field. Look at Toppin. Stays with the low balls. Right now, I think the advantage is for the, the team with the three quick guards and a fabulous freshman, Toppin. This pace definitely favors New Mexico at the moment. With Dent, a couple steals, getting out in transition early, and the aggressiveness of House really has put Boise State on their heels. Cam Martin, the Kansas transfer, is in. That's Martin defending Joseph. Ball moves pretty quickly with this offense. Match move. It's the three. The rebound to Chapuzo Abo. Rice. Anderson. Rice has long distance from three. And he buries that one. I mean, he has long distance. He hit about a 40-footer, which was a key shot in that win on the road at San Diego State to finish the season. Such a unique game. He is, does so many little things that don't show up on the box score. Would classify him as a complete winner, just impacts the game in a positive way. Degenhardt, Anderson, contacts, and free throws. Quick start by New Mexico. Max Rice drills a three. The six seed. New Mexico and Donovan Dent, the three seed, Boise State and Max Rice. Seven five, New Mexico, an early lead. Tyson Dagenhart is the subject of our Reese's player profile. Many thought he'd make a perfect. Gonzaga Bulldog, but Leon Rice, a former Gonzaga assistant, was on him early in the recruiting, convinced him Boise State was the best place for him, and I don't think Dagan Hart regrets the decision at all. Without a doubt. Didn't start the first nine games of his career. Once he moved into the starting lineup, this Bronco program has taken off. He is appearing in his 100th career game tonight, but he is climbing the record books in many categories for Boise State basketball. He does a lot of things for this team. Rebounds, defends, score, and on and off the court, he's the leader. Two shots for Roddy Anderson, the transfer from UC San Diego. Southern California kid, Huntington Beach. Well, he's an interesting player. Average around 14 a game at <clears throat> UC San Diego. But they're not eligible to play in the postseason yet, making that switch from Division II to Division I, which is a terrible rule. It is, especially with I mean, how good they've been in a short amount of time. But he wanted a chance to play an NCAA tournament. He's going to get that with Boise State. Leon Rice has really been happy with the progress that he's made as a point guard over the course of the year. Came in more of a scorer than a point guard. Dagan Hart buries the three. I mean, if they... If they let you into the club, they should let you hit the dance floor, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, yeah, you can come in the club, but just stand in the corner for three years or whatever the waiting period is. Yeah, especially with, you know, all the different nonsense rules the NCAA has and then changing the rules like the transfers and the waivers. Let them in. 7-0 run, first lead for Boise State. Leon Rice. Waiting to see who touched it last. That yeah, did go off top, and it looked like to me and New Mexico gets a break there. But the seven points for New Mexico, all Donovan Dent, three of three from the field. The rest of the Lobos combined 0 of seven. Spoke too soon. Corner three, Jamal Baker, who may get a little more playing time because of Boise State size tonight, and he drills a three. Mustafa Amsil, the sixth man of the year in the Mountain West, is in the ballgame as well for New Mexico. Dagenhart, another three. 
down and then out. Dodges the bullet there. You go under the screen against a good shooter. And you expect it to go in. Baker again. A run by New Mexico. A run by Boise State. And New Mexico with an answer and a four-point lead. Rice. House. No, Toppin keeps it alive. Martin with a big rebound. Boise State will run if they can. Anderson, big step, drew the foul, and that's on Dent. There are so many similarities between Jalen House of New Mexico and Roddy Anderson's game. Neither of them are true point guards. But they play with one speed, and that is in attack mode. Defensively, they're aggressive. They'll get out and pressure you. They'll gamble. And then offensively, I would give the edge to House as a shooter, but they both want to put the ball in the deck and attack the rim. Broncos resume. Jerry Palm has them as a seven seed. In the net, they're 24. They beat St. Mary's. That's a nice win. And they don't really have a bad loss. Yeah. They have six quad one wins, one of 17 teams. If they're the Mountain West team that's kind of been under the radar nationally, we, we've talked throughout the day, and I'm sure the other crew that had the afternoon games, Andrew Catalan, Steve Lapis touched on it as well. Every team in this league that is projected to be in the NCAA tournament has been ranked in the AP or coaches poll at some point this year, except for Boise State. Again, they lost a few games early, kind of flew under the radar, but those tough losses prepared them for Mountain West play. Dent, Mashburn, and Baker in the backcourt now for New Mexico. This is Dent. Dent. Mashburn kicks. Ounceal, way off on the three. And a rebounding foul in New Mexico. That's... Nelly Jr. Joseph. Second person. Fourth team foul. And remember, Boise State has the size advantage. New Mexico has the speed advantage. Richard Patino said it best. He said, our size, and he's talking about lack of it and speed in the backcourt, it can be our strength, but it can also be a vulnerability. Rice, that's dense. And he's fouled. Rice with the reach. And that, they go from zero to 60 better than any team in this conference. Thought of the dead has been spectacular to start this game. That's his fourth steal. We haven't even played eight minutes. Like tempo, New Mexico is a great team for you. They're fifth in adjusted tempo in the nation. They lead the Mountain West and they're 11th in the nation in fast break points. First foul on Max Rice. So you got to give Richard Patino a lot of credit. You know, a, a lot of coaches are stuck in their ways. You know, coming from the Big Ten in Minnesota, where Jamal Mashburn, who hits the jumper, followed him from, that's known as more of a physical, kind of grinded out, slow league where. He comes to the Mountain West. He realizes with the guards that he had a season ago, his advantage is to play fast. Abo with a knuckleball jumper. There was very little rotation on that basketball. And he drains the three, and he can do that. He's a 42% three-point shooter. Toppin, corner, Amsil, fouled. Three free throws. Cam Martin. <laughs> okay, now you, you're a shooting coach now, right? Look at that. That's beautiful, but that's not a lot of rotation. Very little rotation is correct. Usually when you highlight in slow motion a shooter like Abo, that ball is spinning quite rapidly with backspin on it. Not a normal release from Abo. Usually he's got that traditional great release. But I mean, look, it's working for him, 42% from distance. He's hit, and again, he's 6'7 and plays down low a lot. 
He's hit 72 threes, now 73 with that one. Well, he's got such a high pocket, a high release. Doesn't need a lot of space to get it off. All right, I'm going back to your shooting coach uh, career now. Would you advise shooting your free throws from that angle? No. Where's I, the, maybe I, he couldn't find the nail. There, yeah, there, every court, right in the middle of the free throw line, there is a nail that gets you the exact midpoint between left and right elbow. Most shooters line up with it directly in between their stance. Some will right toe it to the nail. But very rarely do you shoot, see a free throw shooter like Anzil lines up right there. And very rarely does he miss. He's 83% from that spot. I do remember Nick Van Exel used to shoot him about four feet behind the free throw line. Late clock three from Dagan Hart is short. Three point lead for New Mexico. You see the three point shooting. I'm sealed. Good ball movement. Mashburn on the way. Uh uh. Jump ball there. Tied up. Stanley and I'm sealed. Hell ball. And it's going Boise State's way. Final. Quarterfinal in the Mountain West and a really good one with New Mexico and Boise State. This, my friends, is Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Coach, with how this game has started, what are the coaching points to your team when you head back in that huddle? Well, we were just a little sped up and turning the ball over. We're a pretty good team about not turning it over. They got us sped up, and that's what they do, and that's when they're best. If we're going to turn it over or if we're going to drive in there and get our shot blocked, they're going to have a lot of points in transition. We just got to settle ourselves down a little bit, kind of settle into what we want to do. Coach, appreciate it. Thanks. All right, thank you, Evan. Leon Rice told us yesterday, you can see his profile. It's impressive, the run that he's had at Boise State. The most important thing for a head coach he has found is creating and maintaining culture. He said it's, it, culture will beat X's and O's any day. Well, I had a chance to, to play for him at Gonzaga when he was an assistant, and I know it was a tough decision to leave Gonzaga, take over his own program, but what he wanted to do was a, create a culture at Boise that he would be proud of. And I tell you what, 14 years later, he has done just that. Now the next step in the process is to get a win in the NCAA tournament. They've been there back-to-back -back years on pace for their third. They've got to get a win in the tournament now. Broncos with the ball down three. Anderson gets in tight, missed the shot. Ball out of bounds. And it stays with Boise State. Most NCAA tournament games played without a win. It goes back into the Bobby Dye era. 0-9 is Boise State. And they have the team this year, the depth to be able to do it. I thought the last two years when they lost to Memphis and Northwestern, they were bad matchups. But I think this year's team is talented enough, and they've got that hunger to advance. And you would think that playing this Mountain West season for all of these teams, the six teams that Jerry Palm has in, is going to prepare them for the NCAA tournament. House is clobbered. I mean, he was fouled hard, and he bounces right back up. Yeah, this league is preparing teams for success in the NCAA tournament. We get another look at the block, which in actuality was a foul on Stanley putting House at the line. But this league prepares you for the NCAA tournament. I think the belief is even more so this year than last because San Diego State made that run to the title game. House with a free throw there. Warner Ladder, the proud title sponsor of the Dan Smith Coach of the Year Award. Join us over Final Four weekend. We'll highlight this year's winners right here at CBS Sports Network. Jalen House, the son of a prolific scorer, Eddie House. And hey, he could get buckets. Absolutely. Arizona State, tremendous score, long NBA career. One dribble pull ups in the mid range. He was almost unstoppable. Well, his son could get you buckets and could get you steals. Hey, it's not safe bringing the ball up the floor against Jalen House. Dagan Hart gets into the block and tries to muscle it up, hits the deck. There's a whistle and. I think Leon Rice may have, or somebody may have picked up a technical foul. 
Yeah, I think it was Leon. He's got to be careful not to get another one because he was extremely animated towards official Nate Harris. Well, he obviously wanted to foul on the Dagenhart shot. We'll get another look at Dagenhart driving the baseline. Good initial defense by True Washington, but then as Degenhart was going up to shoot, he was off balance, so it made it look worse than the contact truly was. Five-point lead, six seed New Mexico. Toppin, Whiting, who's been in and running the show for a while now. Chase Whiting. Sophomore. Stanley's doubled. Whiting spins out of it, trying to get to the rim. Shots blocked. Stays with Boise State. And it was JT Toppin. Whiting penetrates with really nowhere to go. It's by the initial defender, but as a ball handler decision maker, you've got to read help side, how they're converging, where they're converging, and where your opportunities are to create for others. This is Rice against Mashburn. House comes for the double. Dagenhart takes the three. Got it straight on at the end of the shot clock. Big time shot. Eight points now on the night for Dagenhart. Mashburn rises, 18-footer. Look at Toppin, so quick off the floor. OC State, very good defensively. Falling away, that's a bucket. That's Jalen House. Lead is four. JT Toppin, by the way, has six rebounds now. Couple offensive boards for the Lobos. Straight on three. Stanley misses. Dagenhart keeps it alive. Do you get an offensive rebound for that to tip out? You should, yeah. I know. You should. Off balance. A travel. True Washington got into the lane. And Richard Pitino disagrees. He disagrees, but I think the official made the correct call. Even if he wasn't called for the travel, there's nowhere to go. There's no point in penetrating into a crowd. Dagan Hart, Rice, he's a scorer. I mean, Max Rice, it's not easy playing for your father. He's a cold-blooded scorer. He's hit big shots. He makes big plays, house in the lane. Dagan Hart. Pick and roll, almost broken up. Broncos average 76 points a game. New Mexico leaves the Mountain West 83 a game. Shot clock down again. Anderson crosses over in the lane. Can't finish. Ashburn had a thumb injury this year. Missed seven games there. Was ill last week. Missed a game there. And he's hammered to the floor, but no whistle. House has the loose ball. It's off of Dagenhart. This is an intense matchup. Last quarter final in Las Vegas, in the Mountain West. Bracket Week, presented by Kubota.
Back here at the Thomas and Mack, we'll coach through the first 13 minutes of this game. Feels like you're playing it on your terms, at your pace. How do you sustain it? We're being physical. I mean, we're defending. We're making them earn it. They're bigger than us, but I think we're scrapping, doing a great job rebounding the basketball. Got to take a little bit better shots offensively. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank you. So you got Richard Pitino in New Mexico on Jerry Palm's bubble right now. They are 25 in the net, and look who's also there. That last four in St. John's so it's the Sun is the first team of the last four in and St. John's is the last team in for sure. That's a real interesting family dynamic. That would be absolutely. You know that the amazing thing about Rick Pitino is if St. John's gets in that will be have been the sixth program he's taken to the NCAA tournament and we had Steve Alford on the floor here about an hour ago. He's of one of only four to take five, and Patino is in that group as well, along with Long Kruger and, and Tubby Smith. Out of the timeouts, long three from Jamal Blake Baker, True Washington Baker, and Donovan Dent in the backcourt right now for New Mexico. Isaac Mushila is in along with Toppin. Baker again, and he has that one. He can shoot it. And he's knocked down three triples now on the night. Talk about the craziness of the NCAA with COVID years and medical red shirts. Jamal Baker started at Kentucky, went to Arizona, then spent some time at Fresno State before landing in New Mexico. And this is his seventh year. Rashila gets inside. And New Mexico with a run here, their biggest lead, 27-20. You can hear the Lobo fans come back to life. That's a foul on New Mexico. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. Through Washington with the foul, his first. Miss Sheila sits down. And Evan was right. This is exactly the pace and tempo that New Mexico wants. And that's a turnover. Boise State, six turnovers now on the evening. New Mexico, only two. And a couple of those essentially were pick sixes leading to easy buckets in transition. You don't ever want to turn it over, but you can live with that as opposed to an easy transition opportunity. Dent again. He's got nine. Seven oh one. Rice shot fake. Breeze away. He's fouled. We get free throws. Dent pleads his case. Richard Pitino is there as well. Second on Dent, the talented point guard. Ooh, did the leg come out? <coughs> Remember, you're not supposed to be able to draw a foul as a shooter by kicking the leg out. And we don't see it there. Rice opened the season with a thud. He was 7 of 36 from 3, and that's his strength, shooting from long distance. He, he quickly turned it around, though, and he comes in at 36 percent. He's at 71 in the season. A lot of the reason why, though, is as opposed to many players, he's willing to take end of shot clock bad shots. It paid off in a big way for him at San Diego State in the season finale. But he's more worried about winning as opposed to what his field goal percentage is. Dent trying to get it down low to top him, and that's a turnover from New Mexico, just their third. 29-22 here. To the seventh seed, Colorado State takes down the two seed, Nevada. 
And again, none of this is a surprise. Take all the, the seedings of the top seven yeah. teams in the conference, throw them in a hat, pick one out, you're not going to be wrong. And UNLV, they're sitting around 75 in the net. They're as talented as anybody. They played really well, won 10 of their last 11 games, lost in a heartbreaker to San Diego State. Dagan Hart, and that's a nice look from Martin. Martin's unique. He's also a seventh year senior, but the backup big man leads them in assists per game. Boise State runs a lot of offense through him because he's a willing passer. He's able to deliver and create for others. House misses a three. Washington has the rebound. He's got to get out of the lane, and he does. House to the bucket. Jalen House really struggled against Boise State this year. In the two games, he went four for 27. Tonight, eight early points for the speedy guard. New Mexico, 31-24. A reminder, AT&T at the half, the last episode of the day. Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, John Rothstein staying up for us in New York. Best highlights from all the quarterfinal action here in the Mountain West and across the country. Bracket talk, seeding talk, transition scoring talk from Dan Dicko. Well, New Mexico wants to play fast, and they do that by forcing steals and getting out they can do it attacking the rim, or you get back to protect the rim, and it opens up trail threes. Jamal Baker knocking that one down. Two opportunities for buckets within five seconds of taking possession of the ball. And what really fuels it for Richard Pitino is the defense. They lead the Mountain West in blocks. They lead the Mountain West in steals. They lead the Mountain West in points off turnovers. That'll get your offense rolling. A lot of times, you're good at one, not the other. That's what makes this defense unique, is they can speed you up, turn you over on the perimeter, as well as protect the rim. Abo misses a shot. Dagan Hart trying to track it down. He does. House collides. Rice with the foul. 16 foul on Boise State. No free throws yet. And second on Max Rice. And the crowd loves to see that second foul on Max Rice because he has been a thorn in the side of New Mexico. Had 35 in a game earlier this year where he knocked down seven threes. Biggest lead has been nine in breaking through his house. That's just beautiful basketball. Back cut. Recognition when you're denied. Back cut and read delivery of the pass. Rice around the screen. Nice dish. Dagan Hart twirls his way in. Missed it. The stopwatch is on. Up the floor they come. Trail three. Mashburn. Uh-uh. Oh, great play there. Just poking it is Anderson. Controlling it. Losing it. And the other way we go. House can't control it. Boise State crowd wanted a double dribble there, as did Leon Rice. I'm sealed. House rotates. Baker would hit a couple threes, misses that. Actually, he's hit three of four from distance. And a timeout. Boise State calls it. Two and a half minutes left. In this first half, 33-24. New Mexico back at 30. Exactly what Richard Pitino wanted. Disruptive defense. High tempo offense. And a nine point lead as we get close to halftime. For New Mexico, bench points tonight. Well, of course, Baker with his three threes is a big part of that. We told Evan Washburn earlier tonight, this is essentially a play-in game. Win this game, feels like the ticket 
to the dance will be punched. Let's see if the Broncos can make a run before halftime. Whiting is in. Dagan Hart double comes, knocked away. It's good hustle there by Nelly Jr. Joseph. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. Guys, dream start for New Mexico, but some concern here on the sideline for the Lobos. JT Toppins having an extended conversation with the athletic training staff. No real designation on an injury yet. They were kind of testing the strength of his shoulders, his grip. We'll keep you close as best we can, but obviously some concern if he can't go back in this game. All right, thank you, Evan. Speaking of getting back in the game, Evan Washburn has been here from the very start. This is four games. Ironman work. Although the sushi delivery between games three and four was helpful. <laughs> Washburn with the miss. And the rebound to Abo. Whitey. Dagan Hart turned down the three. Marcos having trouble. Dagan Hart doubles. And he picks up a foul. He'll get to the line. Not a lot of ball movement. Man. Ball not in the hands of the scorers as well. Abo really hasn't had a lot of clean looks. And he's a three-point weapon. He was standing on the other side of the floor. Well, Abo, one of three from the field tonight, but ball gets entered in to Degenhardt there. Not great spacing while New Mexico doubled. They didn't converge shoulder to shoulder, so they allowed Degenhardt to split the double team, get to the front of the rim, get fouled. If you're going to double, if you're New Mexico, you got to double with active hands because you've got guards who are really good anticipating, or it's got to be shoulder to shoulder where you don't allow the offensive player, Degenhardt, in this instance, to split through the double. You see Toppin's night has been a quiet one. And Dagan Hart with 11. But right now the New Mexico guards are outplaying Boise State's guards. Dent, Mashburn, House, and Baker off the bench. Dent, a little shovel. Jeez, Joseph. That was a, a really good pass, but it maybe a better catch. It was both. <laughs> that, that shovel pass was on time on target. Right through a small window. Dent's been impressive this year. Had 31 in the game earlier this year. He can score it. He can pass it. He's a great defender. I'm sealed. Doing what he does best. Come off the bench. Provide points. Six man of the year. Joseph with the steal. Joseph against Dagan Hart who pries it loose and it's coming the other way. And that 31 for Dent actually was against Boise State. So he's had success against the Broncos this year. Final minute, first half. Rice back in with Whiting and Dagan Hart. Abo and Cam Martin. Isaac Mushida is in as well for New Mexico. Whiting kind of stumbled into the bucket, missed the shot. House kicks. Washington, Amsio. This is Abo. He averages almost 14 a game. He's probably their best three-point threat, along with Max Rice. In Boise State, you want to get a good shot on this possession. Obviously, you'd love to make it, but you want to execute going into halftime. Rice driving, leaning, missed the shot. Washington, still time. Up ahead. Mushila. No! Both the Broncos and the Lobos had a shot 
and neither could make it. Isaac Mushila, a miss there, a tip there, and a buzzer. And exactly what New Mexico and Richard Patino wanted, he's with Evan Washburn. Well, Coach, what's worked defensively to continue to control this game? Playing really, really hard, scrambling for each other, and rebounding our butt off. This may have something to do with playing really hard. We saw JT Toppin receiving some attention from your training staff. What's going on there? Yeah, I don't know. He got hit, so we'll see how he goes. Obviously, we need him in there. He's a really good player, so hopefully he's okay. Coach, thanks. Thank you. All right, thank you, Evan. The Lobos of New Mexico, 0-2 against Boise State in the regular season, but this first half is a different story. High tempo. High arc. We'll send you to Brent Stover and company in our New York studio, AT&T at the half after these messages, 35-26, New Mexico. We're not leaving Las Vegas. We just arrived, quarterfinal day, Mountain West tournament, last game of the day, six seed, 35. New Mexico on top of Boise State. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow. Evan Washburn joins us. It's a mismatch on both sides, and we wanted to know who was going to win it. Speedy guards for New Mexico, strong and scoring bigs for Boise State. Advantage guards in New Mexico so far. Yeah, New Mexico, I thought, was the aggressor early in this game. They pressured the ball. They got steals, then allowing them to get out in transition. And then Jalen House got going late in that first half, 10 points both creating something out of nothing as well as in pick and roll situations. But Donovan Dent is the guy that got them going. Seven of his nine points came in the first two and a half minutes of the game. He really set the tone and got the Lobos in the driver's seat early. All right, numbers here, the bench points, and a lot of those were on the three threes from Jamal Baker. And of course, he's another guard for New Mexico, and we check in with Evan Washburn. Evan? We spoke to Leon Rice, and it's a similar theme that we've been hearing all day long. The team that played last night, they're playing with better efficiency, better pace. He said, we need to be better at being ourselves. And in terms of slowing this game down, it's not necessarily the pace of the game. He said, we have to slow our minds down and our bodies down. That's what's leading to some of these turnovers, guys. All right, Evan, and the team that played last night, New Mexico, we'll see if they can keep it up. Mashburn driving and scoring. Jamal Mashburn Jr. and New Mexico back up double digits. Their leading scorer on the season is Mashburn. One of eight in the first half. Good to get him going early if you're a Lobo fan. Dagan Hart, aggressive. And he lost that rebound to Nelly Jr. Joseph. Dent is on the floor. And JT Toppin is on the floor, importantly. Remember, he was getting attention from the trainer at the end of the first half. And somehow, that ball didn't go in. Mercy State has missed six straight shots. Going back to the late stages of the first half. Omar Stanley. Rice, boy, that's a quick trigger. With a small window, a man in his face, and he buries a long three. Quick trigger, touched the rafters as well. He has got incredible arc on his, we'll call it a jump shot, it's more of a set shot. Dan crashes and burns, and Anderson with the dunk. And suddenly, Boise State, a three, a turnover, and a dunk. And it's a six-point game, and the Boise State fans have been quiet most of the night, with good reason. Starting to get loud. Dent whips it. House shoots it. Got it. Three. And House gets the three points, right? But Donovan Dent, off that dribble handoff action, creates so much attention for the defense, he just whips it back in a hook pass. The house. I think he was blowing that kiss to you, <laughs> Dan, as he came across half court. One shooter to another. That is what Boise State needs more of. Chibuzo Abo is their best three-point shooter, 42% of the season. 
Rossiter gets a quick shot, missed it. Anderson, Rice wants the ball. Rice heaves it. House. No numbers. Doesn't matter. Jalen House. House and Dent are relentless pushing the ball in transition. At times, House in particular can get out of control, but Richard Pitino will live with it because he plays with such a passion. Good defense by Joseph cutting off Dagenhart. Anderson dribbled it off his foot. House feeds the post. Top and blocked. Held ball. Arrow Boise's way. Stanley just standing his ground as a defender. Vertical challenge, hand on the ball. Resulting in this block shot, but he had one of the best block shots I've seen in the college basketball season, essentially sealing the game at San Diego State, where Jaden Ledee went up for a two-hand dunk, and he met him at the rim to deny it. Look at this. Joseph, and he lost it. We well, applaud, certainly, the effort. Well, Roddy Anderson careless with the pass. Nelly Joseph, the big man, gets the steal. It's sometimes their biggest dream, but also their biggest nightmare. Dribbling in transition with a converging defender. Whiting is in, Anderson is out. Stanley, Granabo so big during the season. Rice clears himself, hammers it through. What a shot fake. The 11 point lead has melted to five. Joseph blocks. Joseph returns. Rice against Dent. Whiting rotates. Abo again. His second three in this half. And the Broncos are within four. They missed six in a row, now they've hit five and six. Mashburn. Chance to get closer, quick release. Rice with the rebound. Dent ties him up. It's a hell ball. Arrow goes New Mexico's way. 11-point lead for the Lobos. The Broncos on a run have drawn within four. Roddy Anderson and all of you out there, you're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Tomorrow, 5 Eastern, it's tournament action. Bracket Week continues from Cleveland. Kent State Bowling Green playing in the first max semifinal at 7.30, the showdown between Ohio and Akron, the two and three seeds. Watch the madness unfold here on CBS Sports Network. We are in Las Vegas, Thomas and Mack. Boise State was down 11. This is their run in Van Dickow. It's fueled from distance. Yeah, they struggled in the first half beyond the arc, but Max Rice and Buzo Abo have found their range here in the second. They've each knocked down a pair of triples. The only issue right now, though, for Boise State, three turnovers the first five minutes after having seven in the first. They've got to take better care of the basketball. Easier said than done against this backcourt of New Mexico. Out of the timeout, Mashburn. Rising, normally a really good mid-range jumper. That thumb injury that he suffered certainly didn't help the, the shooting stroke. 
<laughs> when you look at the overall you know, season for New Mexico, House had a hip injury, Mashburn, the thumb we talked about, those two only played a combined 30 minute, 39 minutes together in the non-conference. And you know, one of the, the silver lining was Donovan Dent got playing time and blew up. It allowed him to really get comfortable as a sophomore, almost as if on cue, knocks down the one dribble pull up. This New Mexico team is not your favorite if you're an analytics lover. They do not fall in love with the three pointer. They are okay with the mid range. I think if you like fast cars too, you might like these guys. Abel's threes hit a couple during the second half, hit one in the first half. Three to six. Because you got three guards who can go, go, go. House the fastest. Mashburn and Dent right behind him. Joseph almost loses it. Baker has hit some big threes in this one. See what I mean? Dent. A terrific initial defense. You scramble out of the double team, but then you're not in help side after a blow-by drive from Donovan Dent. Dagan Hart sensing they need a bucket. Stanley with the screen, off the double. Stanley going hard, a lot of contact, no whistle. And a New Mexico ball. Off the swing, swing. Donovan Dent attacks the closeout. Help side nowhere. He's going to have fun swinging on the rim when defense is nowhere to be found. Dent, House, Baker, 37 points combined from that backcourt. Dent again. Dent has done it in every way you can this afternoon, excuse me, this evening. Steel pushing in transition, attack off a of close at that time in a pick and roll. This Lobo crowd is on its feet and loud, trying to pull away in the Mountain West quarterfinals. Some urgency for New Mexico. That's why this matchup is flashing in front of your eyes. They're trying to stamp the ticket to the NCAA tournament. Probably will do it with a win here. A play-in game, if you will. Utah State pushed to overtime by the nine seed. San Diego State pushed by Didon Thomas and UNLV to overtime as well. Lobo's resume here. The net ranking is really good at 25. Jerry Palm has him in the last four in. They're first on that list of the last four in. That Air Force loss really sticks in the... Uh, Craw, if you want to use that dated term for Richard Pitino, that was a tough one. That Redis Petritus three, and Air Force beat him at the pit, no less. Anderson kicks, Dagan Hart open three, and he's short. Stanley rebound, Rice. Whoa, look at him. Deflection. That's a heck of a catch by that fan. <laughs> See, you don't get to keep the ball in this sport, so there should be some sort of a, a reward. Without a doubt. Get him a hat, get him a souvenir, something. Rice goes down. Dense. Hit. Doesn't matter. Knock him around if you want. Won't stop him. Biggest lead of the ball game. An 8-0 run fueled by the guards. I believe the officials just called a delay of game warning. 
Well, New Mexico, Donovan Dent in particular, after the great finish in transition through contact. Well, maybe it was JT Toppin. Toppin on his way out, Evan Washburn on his way in. And for Dent, guys, that play embodies what I've noticed, and Dan, I'd love to get your thoughts on the play strength. Despite being 170 pounds, the ability to play through contact, that's been on display for Dent throughout this game. Well, a lot of it is for a guard like that is leverage. You get your shoulders down by a defender, you can create opportunities where you draw fouls or you're able to explode through contact. And there's a foul up the floor. Joseph collides. He'll get the foul, knocking over Anderson. Lobo's trying to knock over Boise State. And Donovan Dent is leading the way. 17 points. 52-40 lead. Coming up next are Hoop Savants who've been up all day and now all night and early in the morning into New York. Highlights, analysis, inside college basketball. The Mountain West has been terrific. These quarterfinals, all the games across the country, the implications of the wins and the losses. It's coming up on inside college basketball. Mountain West tournament titles. It's Vegas, baby. San Diego State's got seven. New Mexico has four. And of course, those New Mexico titles that coaching staff, right, here with Nevada, with Steve Alford, Craig Neal. They accounted for three of those tournament wins. The Dent effect. House and Dent, 32 points. The rest of the team had 20. And remember, Jamal Baker's had three threes off the bench. He's a member of that guard fraternity for New Mexico. Max Rice is loose. Missed the three. Stanley, quick back. Great rebound. Quick opportunity rebound. Goes straight back up with it. That's important because Stanley has struggled. Only his first field goal. Four points on the night. Also two of two from the line. Boise State now in a bit of a 1-3-1 zone. They haven't shown that yet this evening. Dent penetrates. Kicks. And yeah, Baker misses the three. It's the guy they want shooting it, though, from the corner. Abo, nice find for Dagan Hart. Good fake, left hand, free throw coming. Count it. Just when you think one team is going to pull away here in the Mountain West tournament, the team that's behind makes a charge. Tyson Dagan Hart, great footwork, patience, the ability to get the ball to the left hand, finish, chance of the three point play. I mean, we've, we've covered this league throughout the year. And the amount of toughness and experience leads you to believe that there are multiple teams in this league that can win a game or maybe two in the NCAA tournament. New Mexico literally off a made free throw, just ran the floor and got what looked like a fast break bucket. Dent dribbled right through the Boise State press. I mean, that can't happen if you're Boise State. Exactly right. Usually a press is designed to slow the game down or speed the opponent up, depending on how much pressure you put on the ball. Dagan Hart cleans up the Stanley miss, and he's fouled, and he's going to the line. And the Broncos could inch a little bit closer. And Stanley not able to convert. Degenhart, right place, right time. We'll see if on a made free throw, Boise State goes back into that three-quarter court pressure. As mentioned, the last one, Dent just dribbled right through it. Degenhart approaching a double-double. Three-point play there, 18 points, eight rebounds. And Boise State back. And just half court man to man. Dent doesn't need an invitation to go. Joseph wants it. Got a size advantage. Steps through. It's a block. No shot. The block was before 
the shot. The Boise State switched. Good recognition by New Mexico to try to enter the ball down low to JT Toppin. Roddy Anderson clearly within the restricted circle, which is why it wasn't called a charge. House blows by Abo. Megan Hart cut off. Stanley against Amsio, the cutter, the rotation to Rice, the three. Crowd wanted to walk. Shot clocks at 10. Dagan Hart contested three. It went halfway down. And hard work by Stanley is going to draw a foul. Eight point game, 8.55 left. Two shots for Omar Stanley. We've talked, sorry, Rich. We've talked about early in the non-conference, Boise State lost a couple t games, and a lot of that was due to the difficulty of the schedule that they had. I think a big part of that prepared them to hit their stride from Mountain West play, but I think the other reason is the emergence of Omar Stanley right around the Christmas break time. A game in Spokane against Washington State, who's clearly an NCAA tournament team was the first time this season he truly put his stamp on the game. He had 23 points that night. Early in Mountain West play, he had 30 and 13 at San Jose State. And I think that really cemented him as another scoring option for this team. Clearly, they are better with him in the starting lineup. They are 19 and 6 when he is a starter. There's a ton of time here. And Dent just picked up his third personal foul for New Mexico. Joseph again mismatched. Washington clocks down. Dent driving. Fouls. Robbie Anderson, the reach. When you put two hands on a driver, normally you're going to get a whistle. Well, that's one of those ones where you're there, but you're not there. Just take a half extra step, get your chest in front. And Washington stepped out of bounds before getting that pass and did not reestablish himself. Richard Pitino told Evan Washburn before the game, this is essentially a play-in game for us into the NCAA tournament. They had a six-point lead, 8.20 left. This feels like an NCAA tournament game. Turning, missing his standard. Another offensive rebound for the Broncos. Rice. Oh. And it rolled around for good measure and dropped out. That was a quick shot off the offensive rebound. Shot clock gets reset to 20 in that situation, but that's a sweet, soft 15-footer. House is John at somebody up in the seats above us. There's been a number of occasions he's looked above us and said something. This Lobo crowd on its feet, hoping that they can finish this out. Stanley surrounded. Puts his shoulder down, Toppin with the block. Toppin with the steal. House with the bucket.
Blow him a kiss, Jalen. The Lobos are rolling tonight. House with the layup. New Mexico with the lead. 60 to 50 in the Mountain West quarterfinals. Ten-point lead for the six-seed New Mexico over the three-seed Boise State. Reach new heights. Brought to you by Werner Ladder. Tell you who's been reaching new heights this season. That is Donovan Dent. He has been off the charts good tonight as well. 17 points, eight of nine from the field. He has been a thorn in the side of the Broncos. He's aggressive in transition. He's good in pick and rolls. And the thing that also makes him so difficult is, is he, he's a creative passer who's a willing passer. Sometimes guys are good passers, but they're not willing. He's got the ability to score and make plays for others. You saw the damage he's done against Boise State. This is the third game. The Broncos won the first two in the regular season. This one in the quarterfinals of the Mountain West Tournament. And in the balance for New Mexico, a ticket to the dance. Anderson, that's a big shot out of the timeout. That's a three. And he gets Boise State within seven. The Broncos have been flirting with getting back in the game. But every time they make a run, New Mexico has an answer. House, pocket pass, beautiful. Joseph Vallejo. You're exactly right. Broncos cut it to four earlier in the half. And the Lobos have had an answer every time. That time, terrific execution on the pick and roll. Standing against Washington. Oh, Toppin! House! Got it! How good is this? The defense of New Mexico leading to fast break points. That's how they do it. Dagenhart, strong, misses. Rebound, got it back. Martin backs in, spinning. Right hand hook, too strong, but the follow on the offside is Abo. He may have gotten away with a push there. Officials can't, can't call everything. <laughs> Tell that to Steve Alford. Exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, they, in that third game that we called right before this, I think everything was called. Both teams shot enough free throws for the day. Timeout, New Mexico. Richard Pitino wants to talk. He's got 30 seconds to do it. We're back after this. Seeding means nothing. In the Mountain West Tournament, you had seven teams coming in that really had a shot at winning it. And in the bottom half here tonight, we had Nevada, the two seed. Now remember, they've had some flu go through that team. But Colorado State was terrific offensively. And the seven seed won that one. The six seed is ahead of the three seed here, 64-55. Turnover. Abo has the loose ball. Rice. Dagan Hart. Shot fake. Looking for shooters. Mexico's guards can really defend. That's a long three and way off. And Anderson, there was still some clock left. Well, mentioned earlier, as a freshman, scored nearly 14 a game at UCSD. He's changed roles, been asked to be more of a point guard, still learning time and shot, how to manage a game. Not a good shot there. Dent runs into Martin. And it's Martin's foul. The reality, too, Dan Dickow, we've talked so much about this a play-in game, essentially, for New Mexico. 
to solidify that NCAA tournament bid. They win this game. The Mountain West is six. Easily, yes. I would 100% agree with that. I mean, you look at top 40 in the net, there are six teams from the Mountain West. The only other two leagues that can claim that, the Big 12 and the SEC. So overall, throughout the course of the year, tremendous success for this league. Now what you want to see is those 16 teams truly get in and make some noise in the NCAA tournament. House has led them tonight, 23 points. Ah! He's 9 of 17 from the field. And boy, he struggled mightily, Dan, in the two games against Boise State this year. He was 4 of 27 from the field and 1 of 16 from 3. And he's a player who plays with supreme confidence. And oh! This shot or two is not going to affect him. Boise State now, no true point guard on the roster. It's interesting if Rice or Degenhardt handles ball handling duties. They both can do it, they're not necessarily playmakers. That's Meadow, but he misses a three. Andrew Meadow getting his first run. Rice with a foul, and the official goes down. But Nixon is all right, and it's good news. Max Rice picks up his third foul. <laughs> he's got a smile about it. At least he's playing it like a calm, cool customer. This is a great 10-day window for officials. With all of the conference tournaments here in Las Vegas, another missed free throw by New Mexico. These officials are all getting like one game a day for 10 days in a row. Dagenhart, that's as deep as you, you would expect him to go. Martin. Oh! That's ah, a big boy dunk. And Boise State's within seven. Plenty of time left for under four minutes. Stop waiting. Poppin. Dagenhart steals it. Whoa! House leaps over him. Joseph knocks it away. I think we got a foul. And Dagenhart's going to get some free throws. This is crazy. Up and over his house. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Werner, the official ladder of NCAA March Madness. Reach new heights. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. The sphere is becoming the iconic Vegas shot these days. Keys to the game brought to you by Ace, the helpful place, Dan Dickow. Well, New Mexico. Crash the boards, they've hung tough in that area, stayed out of foul trouble, three with three, but it doesn't look with three and a half minutes left, that's gonna be an issue. Boise State take care of the ball. They did not in the first half, the second half much better, and then limit the Lobos in transition. 12 New Mexico fast break points, a lot of those off of careless turnovers early in the game. It's been the guards that's fueled New Mexico. That guy's the leader, Jalen House. We check in with Evan Washburn. Evan? Guys, listening into that last New Mexico huddle, I must have heard rebound the ball at least 10 times. And as has been the case all night, that guy, Jalen House, along with the head coach, kind of commanding the group. House just pleading. We get stops, rebound the ball, no second chance opportunities. They feel like they do those things, they close this thing out. Well, Evan, I, I think, and that's one of the things that Richard Pitino told us. He did not make this a secret with his team. He let them know, look, guys, this is a play-in game. And you, you had it, Evan, at the start. And it wasn't like, hey, look, I'm gonna, I don't want to take pressure off these guys. I want them to know what's at stake tonight and play like it, and they have. Lead is six, 320 left. Dent. House. House. Left hand. Yes. 
He is relentless in attacking the basket. Rice hunting for a three. Skips it. Martin against a smaller Baker. Backing, spinning, muscling. Toppin comes in for a block. But Martin will get two free throws. Toppin, by the way, 10 rebounds in the game to go with just two points. Good job from Martin. Understanding the size advantage he has. Back down, get to a spot where you can elevate, create the contact, get to the line. He's not a great free throw shooter. A lot of it due to a shoulder injury he occurred in the offseason. So he's got a little bit of a funky release, but he's an important part of what they do. National champion at Kansas. He was really big in the San Diego State win. He had some nice minutes at 10 points. Lead seven. If you're New Mexico, expect pick and rolls with Donovan Dent. The secondary actions would be Jalen House attacking closeouts. And Boise State, don't forget, you got to finish the possession with a blockout. Abo trying to defend. House, it's a three. Oh, he tried to bank it. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. Joseph's in the corner, though, and that's good heads up. And New Mexico, right in front of their bench, they call a timeout. 2.16 left. The 6th seed, New Mexico, of all the Mountain West teams, the six teams that Jerry Palm has in the NCAA tournament, this is the one that's on a bubble. It's part of the last four in. It's the first of the last four in. A win here for Jalen House in New Mexico should be dancing. Uh, Jalen House has been really good. He is ultra aggressive. 25 points, 10 of 20 from the field, but he's got a tremendous amount of experience, and with that comes the reading of the game. You get overplayed back cut. You screen, you replace, you get in the vision of your teammate Donovan Denton who can find you. At that point, it's just a matter of stepping up and knocking down shots. And Donovan Denton is the X factor here because House and Mashburn had to share point guard duties. Once Dent emerged, when those two were injured, then House could be House, and Mashburn could be Mashburn. And Dent is more of the type of player who is willing to take a back seat at times. House wants to imply his game upon what's going on on that particular night. Baker misses the three. Stanley has the rebound, and the Broncos need points. We're under two minutes left. Down seven. Abel rises. It's a three, and he missed it. And Toppin has yet another rebound. He's got 11. House. Rice with the block. David Hart the other way. Quick three from Abel on one end, and then a quick attack from House. Not good offense from both teams. It's a New Mexico foul on the drive. Dagan Hart will shoot one and one. Rice gets back, comes up with the block. House continues to argue with Richard Patino as well as Donovan Dent that he got fouled. Now he's talking to the official. But that's just not a good play in that situation. You're up seven. Dent trying to calm him down. House keeps chirping at him as well as the officials. Dagan Hart, we showed you at the outset how good he's been in his last 10 games. This is his 12th 20-point game of the season, his fourth double-double of the season. He has played his best when they've needed him the most. And this is as close as the Broncos have been in a while. They did draw within four, but then New Mexico went on a run. House spins away from the double team. Joseph ahead, House to the bucket. Toppin, that's a smart play there and a foul quickly by Roddy Anderson. Zero, Roddy Anderson the third. That's his third personal. Third personal on Anderson. 18 back. Bucket 27 left. Good job from New Mexico breaking the press. I mean, there's 
two sides to that play. Yes, maybe you take the two points at the rim with the dunk, or you take a couple off seconds off the clock and get to, to the free throw line. A couple big ones for Donovan Denton here. He's 70% on the season. Now West was one of the first conferences to play their tournament here in Las Vegas. And it quickly became a real success. And then others follow. The Pac-12 came here. Big West. Whack. Who am I missing? The WCC. Yeah, thank you, the WCC. Thank you. They're early. They're already out of town. Anderson driving. Got it up. Stanley can't follow. Toppin. Man, for a freshman, he has his hands on the ball at the most important times. A dozen rebounds. He hasn't been scoring tonight, but he's been blocking shots and getting big rebounds. He impacts the game in so many ways. Defensively, he's versatile. He can switch when needed. He can hard hedge or trap a pick and roll. He can protect at the rim with his length and shot blocking ability. He's light years ahead of where this New Mexico staff thought he'd be. It's been a terrific addition. But he misses the front end, Rice down the floor. Anderson thought about a three, now drives. Finds Rice, fires up a three. Oh, that's short. Joseph with the rebound. Boise gets it back. Anderson hits a three. A big shot for Boise State, down four now. Under a minute left, and a foul in the backcourt. Extra possessions. Leads to a scramble defensively. Can't get to Ronnie Anderson in time, who knocks down his second three of the evening. There's still time for Boise State. Anderson with the foul for Boise State. It's his fourth. And now Dent gets two. Boise State is solidly in the NCAA tournament right now. Jerry Palm has them as a seven seed. They're 24 in the net, but not New Mexico. They need this game. They need this win to solidify a bid. Anderson slips through a double. Dagenhart can't find the handle. One of the reasons for this event's success, the fans from places like Albuquerque and Laramie, San Diego, the amount of people that pour into this city to watch college basketball, and at first it was the Mountain West. It looked like it hit Dagenhart's foot. Yeah, I would agree. Hand on it there by Baker, a knee. Can't tell from that angle. The officials with the ability to go to the monitor want to make sure they're 100% correct, but I believe it will stay with New Mexico ball. Yeah, it looked like it hit Dagenhart's leg and with the ball redirected. I don't think this will take much longer. Right there. Forty-six seconds left. Ball. Six point lead. 
That was the question at the start. Even Richard Patino said it. Our speed and lack of size in the backcourt can be our biggest strength, but it's also a vulnerability. And Boise State has bigs, talented bigs, that they can exploit the lack of size with. But it's been the guards, it's been Dent, it's been House, it's been Baker off the bench, it's been Mashburn. All night long. House has 25, Dent has 21 and four assists. Baker with three threes. Mashburn chips in with four. Well, they've gotten production from multiple guys up and down the roster. The scoring load has been carried by Jalen House and Donovan Dent, but really Dent set the tone from the start. A couple early steals, a couple early buckets in transition from him. But don't underestimate the importance of the dozen rebounds for Toppin because that kind of neutralizes the big advantage yeah. that Boise State has. 44 rebounds for Boise State, 43 rebounds for New Mexico. They'll take that even on the boards with Boise State. Yeah, Boise State nearly an eight rebound per game advantage on the season. With their size advantage, you would think that that would be an emphasis tonight. Rice kicks, Dagenhart fakes, dunks. 31 seconds left. A timeout, and it's a five-point game. This, if you're a Boise State fan, this is still doable. From what we've seen in the Mountain West this yes. year, with crazy finishes, even UNLV getting to, to overtime and tying it against San Diego State. Well, shot fake with the defense converged. Get yourself a quick two. You can now reconvene in the timeout. Get yourself organized, but you're right, Rich. This Mountain West, there's been some crazy, incredible finishes. Wyoming down 11 with under a minute on the road against Colorado State, somehow winning in overtime. Utah State being down towards the end of the game. Essentially a five-point play on, in this building to win early in Mountain West play. There's been a number of crazy finishes. And of course, Boise State played an epic game, their last regular season game, and beat San Diego State at Viejas, which is obviously not easy. Hey, that game went to overtime. A big three with the shot clock winding down from about 45 feet from Max Rice essentially sealed the deal. But Boise State's not going anywhere. Go for a quick steal. If you don't get it, be ready to foul. You want to try to push the ball into the poorer free throw shooter's hands. Donovan Dent under 70%. JT Toppin around 57% on the season as well. House. He's fouled. Stanley reached and got him. Now House. On the night is four of six, but he's 88%. And Jared Lucas, two of the top free throw shoes. Remember, Lucas had that free throw melt down. That was Colorado State in Fort Collins, of course, he hit the half court shot to win that game, so that eased the pain. <laughs> And now on this end of the floor, Boise State pushing transition as quick as you can. Don't necessarily have to settle for a three yet, but you got to get a quick shot if you're New Mexico. Don't foul, but don't give direct line drives. That's Anderson. Takes the three. Missed it. Long rebound. Baker. House. Oh, oh. They both go down. They're tangled up. The benches stay where they are. Anderson was not going to give up a dunk. House was going to slam it through. But what do you expect if you're Jalen House in that situation and you're being chased down in a physical game like this, a tight game? Roddy Anderson, of course, is going to contest that. 
The reaction from House is unnecessary. Rodney Anderson made a play on the ball. Well, House hung the, on the rim. Although it looked like Anderson grabbed the piece uh, at the end, end on the, on the way down. On the when they're both on the ground there, it does look like Anderson held him a little bit. Yeah, but you know what? On that view, Dan, watch the left hand of Anderson on the left arm of House. If we, if we see that again, gotcha. Yep. He grabbed him when he was in the air and attempting the dunk. But right from the initial there. angle. It looks good, but then yes, I do see what you're pointing at. So a little bit of extracurricular from Roddy Anderson. Hopefully the officials get this cleaned up. And I, mean, I think that's a that's a flagrant one. I would think it's yes, a to, flagrant to one. To grab a dunker by the left arm and pull it back right there. Yes. After seeing it another time, I would agree with you. And thankfully, House with an awkward landing is okay. Stanley does a nice job of just getting in there and and trying to separate the two and not escalate it. Jalen House, though, is a lightning rod for a lot of fans in this league. You, you seem to either love him or you can't stand him because he plays with a lot of emotion. Obviously, he's a really good player. He's been impactful throughout his time at Albuquerque, and he's been enormous tonight. You'd take him on your team, right? If you needed a, a spark plug guard who could pry the ball loose and stir tempo up, he's he, your guy. He will not back down, that is for sure. All right, here we go. We're going to get a visit, and Greg Nixon right now is going to talk to coaches. You were right, Rich. Flagrant one, personal foul has been confirmed on the floor, says official Nate Harris. There's a congregation of both Lobos and Broncos at half court. The officials went on to just remind everybody, hey, there's a lot at stake here in terms of ejections, and you don't want to miss the next game. And cooler heads prevail. You're exactly right. You don't want anything bigger to come no. about in this last 16 and a half seconds. Both teams have a lot to play for. Yeah, the next game for Boise State is going to be in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The next game for New Mexico is going to be tomorrow night in the semifinals of the Mountain West. 29, a season high for Jalen House. And all of these fans that have come from Albuquerque, from around New Mexico, from all over the place, as part of the Lobo Nation, it means two things. Number one, it's a good night tonight. Number two, they can stick around a little longer <laughs> and enjoy Las Vegas and be back here tomorrow night. And for that guy, Dad may still be on the bubble. <laughs> Richard Patino, he's not, may be getting off of it shortly. Let's see if this is a free throw. State won the two regular season matchups. But at the quarterfinals in the Mountain West Conference Tournament, it's New Mexico. And the Lobos are going to run their record to 24 and 9, probably improve their number 25 net ranking, and hopefully tomorrow morning wake up off of Jerry Palm's last four in. The Lobos do it.
Richard Pitino told Evan Washburn that this is a playing game for the NCAA tournament. Well, they win by 10 over a really good Boise State team who's 24 in the net, 76, 66. The brackets are closed. 76, 66. New Mexico advances, the six and the seven seed. Don't let those numbers fool you. They are talented. They can win this tournament. Colorado State and New Mexico, the one seed Utah State, the defending champs, the five seed San Diego State. That's tomorrow on CBS Sports Network. This was a must win, and impressively, New Mexico did. Or New Mexico played with a ton of emotion, a ton of passion, but they also played with a ton of execution. They executed the game plan that Richard Patino and staff had set out nearly perfectly to jump out to an early lead. Evan Washburn with Jalen House. Yeah, Rich, I think I'm here with the most juiced guy in this building. From the start of this game, you and your team had your foot on the pedal and just did not stop. What was the mentality that really you led from the start? Uh, shit, keep their, keep our foot on their necks the whole time. I mean, they got us twice already this season, and it's hard to beat a team three times. So we just thought if we go out there, play physical, rebound, and defend, we'll have a great chance of winning this game. By winning this game, and I know the goal still continues tomorrow and hopefully Saturday, but you, for all intents and purposes, locked up a spot in the NCAA tournament. How does that sit with you? Amazing. This is my first tournament ever. I don't even know how to feel right now. I'm so excited, man. I, I really don't know how to feel. I'm so excited, man. We saw you kind of pointing to the crowd. I mean, I know you're a guy that plays with emotion, but what was going through your mind in those moments? That guy in that hat over there got me going. <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> what do you have in store for a semifinal Friday night here in Vegas? Try to get a win again, man. I'm, I'm not trying to go home. I'm trying to stay out here till, till Sunday morning. <laughs> Jalen, it was fun to watch. We'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate it. Fun to watch. We do apologize for the beginning of that. For Dan Dickow, Evan Washburn, Jalen House, our entire CBS crew, I'm Rich Waltz. Good night from Las Vegas, New Mexico, Colorado State into the semifinals. This is a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Right now, everybody's still awake in New York. Back to the studio. Inside college basketball. The Lobos on Bracket Week, presented by Kubota.